the most amazing AI coding assistant just got significantly better. I'm very excited to share with you today a new update for AI coding assistant called Klein. In this short video, we will cover the new update. Why is it important? I will share with you some data about why it's important. And then I will showcase the impact on uh, generating AI code, AI assisted code. Before we dive into it, um, basically, any workflow, we have the planning stage, the acting or execution stage, and the feedback stage. This is something very common that we see also in uh, workflows in real life. Whenever we do something, we think about it, then we act, then we gather feedback from um, the external world, whether it's from other people or from the machine or whatever. And this is also something that is becoming more and more common in any AI agentic uh, workflow. So very often we see, for example, in the AG2 workflow, we have the agent critique, which basically uh, you give an agent a task, then it uh, conducts or executes the task, and then it gets you have another LLM, which provides a feedback or a score based on the output on, of the task. Now, this is very important because um, based on research in many different instances, we saw often that there, it yields better results. Now, I want to share with you uh, a blog post by the Ader team. Ader is another um, AI coding assistant, which uh, I don't use often, but I really love uh, reading their blogs. Basically, what they uh, checked is the performance of different pairs of models. When you have an architect model in which the architect model is doing the planning of the code of the task and we ha you have an editor model which does the editing of the code and the execution and you can see in this graph the results um, the pass rate which in this case was like uh, passed uh, uh, solved some uh, coding problem and you can see the pairing so when you have o1 as a, a planner and DeepSeq as the executioner, this is the, the old DeepSeq, it's not the new DeepSeq, the pass rate was 85. When you had only O1 doing the planning and the ex execution, the pass rate was almost 80%. When you have a uh, Claude Sonnet with DeepSeq, for example, the pass rate was 80. So basically, um, the colors um, represent the architect and the x-axis represent the execution or the editing code and uh, the, the LLM that was used for editing so it's very important to make a distinction between the planning phase and the execution phase and this is something that I also feel in in my daily workflow when I plan what I'm going to do and then I execute I usually get things done uh, go, get more I'm usually more productive than when things get mixed when I plan and execute in the same time I often start drifting and start rethinking stuff and eventually the whole day can pass without doing anything. And there are different models that are better for planning and different models that are better for um, execution. As, as you can see here in this blog post by the editor team again, so they said that uh, UWQ is a code architect, not an editor. So basically they say that it performs better since it's a reasoning model. Usually the reasoning models work better as, as strategists, as planners and architects in opposing to actually executing the code. Okay, so that was like kind of context and long um, background. Now, um, today we are going to cover this new feature that was implemented in Klein. For those of you who don't know, Klein is an open source project. That basically, it's an AI coding assistant that is being used as an extension in VS Code. If you want to download it, you come here, extensions, right Klein, this guy, and you make sure to install it and you have it over here. Now they have added the new, uh, the new feature. They have added a toggle that allows you to toggle between planning mode and acting mode. Note that they didn't, um, you still need to switch between LLMs if you want to work with two LLMs in the, for each uh, role. So if you want a reasoning model to plan 
an execution model to act, you need to change it over here, which is also new. They added this ability to change the models from here. Let's go into the code and see what, uh, let's go into the source code and see what is difference in the prompts. And then I will show you how this actually works. So this is the code from Klein. And basically here is a breakdown of act versus plan mode. In each user message, the environment details will specify the current mode. There are two modes, act mode. In this mode, you have access to all tools except the plan mode response tool. In act mode, you use tools to accomplish the user task. Once you have completed the user task, you use um, a temp completion tool to present the result of the task to the user. In plan mode, in this special mode, you have access to plan mode response tool. In plan mode, the goal is to gather information and get context to create a detailed plan for accomplishing the task, which the user will review, approve, and, and approve before they switch to acting mode to implement the solution. So this is like a, a more detailed part of the system prompt. What is the plan mode? As this, is every, this prompt is being sent to the LLM in every message that you send. So what is plan mode? You are usually in act mode. The user may switch to plan mode in order to have back and forth with you to plan how to best accomplish a task. When starting in plan mode, depending on the user request, you may need to do some information gathering, e.g. using read file or search files to get more context about the task. You may also ask the user clarifying questions to get a, be a better understanding of the task. Once you've gained more context about the user request, you should architect a detailed plan for how you will accomplish the task. Okay, so basically let, let's uh, see this in action. In action. Before this, if you would have uh, wanted to create, a, I don't know, um, a new workflow automation, you only had the act mode. So basically you would have told Klein uh, what you would like and it would start generating the code. It wouldn't ask you clarifying questions. In opposing to this, now what, that you have the planning mode, the client won't execute anything. It will just ask you clarifying questions, build the strategy and the architecture of the solution and only afterwards it will start acting. So let's assume that we want to build, let's build a simple Next.js to do list web app. Okay, so let's see what it does. And by the way, I'm using DeepSeek Reasoner, which is the new uh, model by DeepSeek. R1, it has uh, like a reasoning abilities. It is working pretty well. Let's see what it does. Okay, let's plan an XJS uh, list application. Here's the proposed architecture. Project setup, initialize Next.js app with TypeScript and Tailwind CSS directory, structure pages. So this is the architecture. These are the core features. This is the technical stack, state management, additional consideration. And then it asked me a few things. Would you like to proceed with this stack? Adjust any technical choices. Add or remove any features. Toggle to act mode to begin implementation. Let's simplify this as much as possible. But I want you to make sure that we are using Shad CN UI. So just so you see that it doesn't execute anything. Now, if I would like to start acting, I will just hit the act button and you will see what happens. And afterwards, I will show you um, how it looks like without the acting, uh, without the planning mode. So revise plan using Shad CN UI, simplified architecture, single page application, modified uh, setup set steps, and basically so the components, so the features. And then it asks me, what should we do next? So let's act mode and then it will start building. It immediately starts building. Okay, so it wants to create the new project repo. So let's run the command. Okay, so you get the gist. Now let's do something similar, but this time let's create a new conversation and start immediately from the acting phase. So let's turn this off. We will close terminal. 
Let's build a simple Next.js to-do list web app. Now we are not on the planning, we are on the acting. So it Im immediately going to start with us without, without acting, uh, asking clarifying questions. I see it works, I'm assuming it will work because as you saw in the open source code, basically has different system prompts. Let's see what happens. I'll send the API request to DeepSeek R1. And immediately it, it wants to create the to-do list app. Let's run the command. And it immediately starts um, creating and executing the code. Now, um, I believe that the planning and acting is going to be way, way better because this way there is no waste and it doesn't also, um, it kind of requires us not to build stuff on autopilot without understanding and thinking through about the whole project. Uh, very often when we don't think through about the project, we start going back and forth and it becomes very messy and from there on it's kind of a shitstorm and things don't work out as, as, uh, as expected. So this is why this new ability to plan up front and also plan in between is very crucial. And I love this, uh, this new feature by the client team. Let's see if I wanted to cover anything else. I think that's pretty much it. Let's just make sure we saw the code, we saw the showcasing. We know this is for a different video. So I guess that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, obviously like and subscribe. Leave a comment below with your feedback. Um, yeah, and until next time, keep on automating.